Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Jason. You are listening to Dice, Dice in, in My Mind. Welcome to another episode of Dice in Mind. We have spent, or we actually spent last week, talking through Pathfinder. Pathfinder is one of the more complex, crunchy, detailed role-playing games out there. They took, obviously, the version 3 rule set from Dungeons & Dragons and continued to grow it. Last week was talking about version 2 and how they were trying to, in effect, do some competition with 5e. This week, we're going to talk about Fate. And Fate is a very unique role-playing system because, Jason, I'm going to... um, I'm going to plagiarize you. You summed, you summed it up right before we recorded. It is very, very story driven. Yeah, big time. And when you look at the material, like I have, we both have a set of dice. I have um, the deck of fate. We both have looked at it accelerated and condensed, and we've talked about the different aspects of it. It looks almost too simple mm-hmm. to play. It looks almost so simple that there's, and that was my. My first inclination, I, I picked up the core materials because it was on sale. I think it was a Kickstarter or something. Um, I picked up the book on Amazon, I believe, for 10 bucks on a, on a good yeah. a Black Friday or something. And I thought it was a very unique and different take on role playing, but it wasn't crunchy enough for me and it wasn't traditional enough for me. What I have found, the more I have read it, and the more Jason and I have talked about it is that it is such a unique take of role playing that one could argue if you look at really the, the motto or the mission statement of this podcast, you could argue that fate could fit better than most other RPGs in terms of rolling the fate dice against life so i'll open it up there because i think that can probably you could probably and again i'm not saying it's the only one i'm not saying i'm not saying that with absolute i'm i'm just saying that one could make that argument i i agree i think i think that's what has attracted both of us to honestly the mechanic more than anything um, just just picking up here my copy of the fate accelerated handbook which uh, I I mean, I think is incredible. It's very brief. It's, well, I'm looking for the number of pages here, including the index. Uh, it's 45, 40, not even 50, maybe 50 pages even, just shy of that. Just looking at the back of it. And I quote, Fate Accelerated is a condensed version of the popular Fate core role-playing game that brings all the flexibility and power of Fate in a shorter format. Inside, you'll find a method for making, and here we go, fast, fun characters, and simple systems to support whatever story you can dream up on the fly. In other words, it's this really slick way to help you quantify and randomize any situation, any world, right? That any situation that you might want to play in. And so, no, I, I agree with you. And we'll let me, let this, me, I'm going to, I'm going to tee you up here because I know the answer to this. You looked at fate for one particular reason at one point. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything until later. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I just, I figured I just based off of what you were talking about, I thought I'd tee you up on it because I think it's worth mentioning now, in my opinion. Okay. So you, you, you know me well enough. People who listen don't, but you know me well enough that you know, much like you, when I am turned on to something new, I sometimes, air quotes, will take it to the nth degree to really test its boundaries and my interest in it. And fate and the face dice were like that for me. So what everyone, what what Brad's talking about is I picked up the fate accelerated book. uh, What's the date in here? Um, Three and a half years ago. And boy, within probably pondered for a few months and then early in 18, I started developing a port of Star Trek using the fate system. And then 
And I mean, I won't even tell you how much office time I spent when I wasn't busy working, uh, changing fonts and changing page layout and printing hard copies of that little manual I sent you and, and, and our friend Brian, just until I got it right. And I got it to be a fairly fungible system, a fairly fungible mechanic, super simple, using the fate dice, could quantify anything, and let me tell you, talk about a lack of interest from the two of you, which was a good lesson for me because in retrospect, it was not the right system at all to use for where we want to go with Star Trek eventually. But it it got me into the mind space of the mechanic. And I have to say, even though we don't play Fate, I mean, maybe you have. I've never actually played it. I haven't, no. No, I I still. I've read a lot. You and I have both just because you of the fascination. Yeah, yeah. I, I. It's so different. It's so different. I've read a lot about it, yeah. but we haven't played it. No. So, and just for the record, um, at the time, I don't remember the context in which I remember reading it all. That when you would write it. Yep. I don't. Rem- I think it was more ambivalence on my part rather than complete disinterest. Disinterest in doing it. I think I was more on the pathfinder D D yeah. mindset that's that's fair because because we because i had gotten i had returned to role playing we talked about this a lot in our early episodes we're we're coming back uh it was certainly in the future episodes especially next week but i got back into role playing rpgs uh thanksgiving of 16 and uh did a little star wars with you guys and then you, we, we've talked about this before. I mentioned this last week. You pushed hard on Pathfinder. I finally gave in because in all honesty, I just decided this is the only way I'm going to get to ever play anything. <laughs> and you wanted to GM and and yeah. I wanted to play. And so that was well worth it. But you're right. But we, we were like, like I was like, like we were reading Pathfinder really seriously at the time when I picked this up and it was new to me. And yeah, I became enamored. But but the fact is, I think as you said, when you opened this episode, so you've got the, the Pathfinder D20 mechanic, which is as crunchy as it comes. And that's what attracted you. And then there's this opposite pole of extremity, which is the four dice fate dice or the old fudge dice system, which is four dice, each with the with pluses, minuses, and blinks, allowing you to have a roll that's anything from plus four to minus four, as you said before I started recording. And then, even though fate doesn't call it this, if you then add in your mods or your you know your mods for your aspects, then you can be uh, in, in accelerated. You can go up to I think plus eight. Core might yep. be a little higher. I don't know. Oh, plus okay, eight. So, and it. that's their that's their ladder. But it's such. It's so almost stupidly simple, Brad. And yet, like, you see, now I haven't thought about fate in a long time. And now that I'm thinking about it for a real life application, it's like if I, and I I mean this, I'm going on the record. It's not my favorite mechanic, but I'm going on the record. if, If I had to grab any dice mechanic to readily, instantly quantify real life for my own edification, for a game, anything, I think far and away, the slickest would be the fate dice system because it's a two minute learning curve. You roll it, you add your mod, like, oh yeah, I did that once. I stayed at a holiday in and boom, there's your score. And there's no computation. There's no averaging of symbols, right? There's no rolling additional dice for your weapons. It's just, it's what it is. You, you've teed up here just um, we're gonna have a sh- we're gonna we're gonna go back to our roots and talking about we'll get to fate in a second. I would argue Uh-oh. that for me personally the FFG system is more realistic to me. Fate comes oh, in a close second. F you know for me wait, wait, you're for saying many- re- you're saying realistic, not just expedient. Yes. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm not talking expediency. No, here. I I'm talking in terms of realism, in terms of just daily decision making. Yes. And Jason knows this. I, I switch I switched jobs back in June. Um, very different dynamic um, and not less difficult. It's just a matter that there was less stress on me. Just healthy. And so we've had 
we've had much more time than, than prior to game, to talk about games. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's a day that goes by where you and I aren't on chat or we're talking on the phone or we're, or whatever, whether it's about games or what else. It's wonderfully distracting. The complexity of FFG, yeah. the complexity I'm air quoting, um, feels more like if I were to use that to roll real life every day, you know, like that where Sheldon was, where Sheldon decided to turn a D20 into his decision maker and he ended up having <laughs> buttermilk and mashed potatoes or something like that at Cheesecake Factory. But he'd do um, it because it was the dice. Because it was the dice. <laughs> right. Now, that being said, you know, I look at the, I'm looking, I have the core book in front of me. And uh, Jason and I have this rule that we never follow where I will. Um, yeah, I'm just, through. we're giving up I, on that rule. We're go, giving just, up, go, yeah. go nuts. Just so here, but I'll, I look I'll at, if you look at the basics second. here, Brad, there we go. There you it's go. Broken. That's, that sounds good. Okay. First 13 pages of the book of the core book, yeah. which is 300 it, pages. First 13 pages on, are on the basics on how to play. You could read the first 13 pages and See. in effect, yeah. without, if you were to walk into a game at a gaming store, or if a friend told you they wanted to play yeah. and they were the game master, um, you could read the first 13 pages. You could read, you know, whether you, I know that accelerates a little different. Oh, I, I, so I think accelerated is probably mostly those pages plus then some character stuff in the back. Yeah. Well, well and there's a different, what's funny is condensed. I'm sorry. There's mm. been a mm. lot of discussion and mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of it. If you read um, forums and, and discussion boards, posts that occurred in 2020 during the pandemic when people had a lot of time yeah, to read yeah. and study you'll see a lot of folks that are much like with pathfinder 2 there is um there are the 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 likers and the haters when it comes to the new condensed sure that came out i haven't really dug into it i did get the book it's sitting next to me i focused more on the core system and then we'll get to what we've talked about before some of the, the other books that go with it. To me, when I look at fate from a dice mechanic perspective, now I'm looking at the set of dice I have um, it's called the, you know, they have different, what is it? Uh, themed dice. I have yeah. the Eldritch dice. So they are different. Oh, spooky. Yeah. Different colors of green. If you think about it, it's adding up again, pluses and minuses. Yep. People look at this and go, oh, there's nothing to this. Mm -hmm. know, I'd rather I'd rather play another game that has more complexity. Fate is so simple mm -hmm. that you start at such a ground level, you can make it as complex as you want. Right. Other games have a higher level of complexity, and then you can add to that. Even Pathfinder, as complex as it can be, you can make more complex. Yep. Fate starts at ground zero. Yep. And we'll get into the char the character sheet builds and all that. Mm -hmm. It's just it's so narrative driven. I right. think in all honesty, our future Star Trek project, it will be interesting to, to, to do it within the realm that we're going to do it. But I think it would be worth an episode or something like that down the road if you resurrected your uh, Star Trek fate and us have a discussion about it. You, may, you know, may, maybe I will say the the world building and i i mean I, yeah of course the world's been built for us to play in right it's star trek but but the world building specific for the game right no different than than we're we're playing D, &D these days and you did a ton of world building for our game and for me within D, &D. the world building that i did for that first try with the fate dice uh, or the fate mechanic, largely because then the mechanic wasn't getting in my way. There wasn't much of a learning curve. That world building, those core ideas, no, no pun intended with the core manual, they, they still strongly inform what I am envision for our Star Trek port. Oh. And they even, oh. honestly, some, some of those ideas, um, some of those ideas have informed the Star Wars game we're going to start soon. Uh, you know, like yeah. echoes of it, right? Um, on that notion, Brad, of world building and well, like you said, fate is like almost purely narrative. Let's talk for a moment before you get into the character building. Let's talk, because it is different. I think, I think character uh, sheets and building in fate are, 
I think they're different. I don't. I I think they're unique. I don't get the same. I'm I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Do you, I know there are some aspects of it you like and some aspects you don't. And we're talking about the character sheet, but there are components to the character sheet that you need for play. Yep. Yep. And I know we've had some discussion about them, um, and some of it was was. I don't know the right word. You, you question some of it. Maybe I think I just don't. I think it just doesn't resonate with me. That's all. I, I get it. Okay. Um, I think when I got the manual, or I, I don't know if I went, if it was either after or before I picked up Fate Accelerated, because I think it's really slick. Uh, I watched the, um, uh, what is it? Will Whedon's Tabletop. Wasn't that the name of the show? I think and, so. And they had one of the, I think they had one of the fake guys teach them the game in the show uh, you know one of the geek and sundry uh, shows and i watched that and and it helped me make sense of it but no you're right i i i respect the ideas i don't resonate personally with the use of aspects which are kind of this hybridization between attributes or abilities as well as these narrative points that also manifest in literal points. And then the flip side of that, uh, the consequences, um, they just don't jive with me. But again, that's just because I think this is where my crunchiness shows. I think it's honestly like when I think of, when I think of being a, a player, I think, oh, that could be fun. I think as a GM, I don't like ambiguity in data like i'm just inherently not a qualitative researcher in my research right i i i think narrows is important but at the end of the day i'm going to put a number on that sucker no matter what and fate doesn't allow you to, and i know you're the same fate doesn't allow you to do that so no, we're we here both, we, yeah. talk, talk about the sheet yeah yeah we we both do we we both we are in different realms when it comes to work but it's it's funny how there are real parallels. And when when even, Brad says we're in different realms, it's because he gets paid a buttload more than I do. Not but, necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> not necessarily, but um, so we true. won't talk. We won't. We won't get into cars and everything like that since Jason just bought a Porsche. But oh I, yeah, I can't, I can't, yeah, it's on my desk right here. Yeah, I can't. If I had done that, I'd have to live in it. Um, oh yeah. Just you let me go to the aspects yeah. quick, and then I'll come back. to yeah, yeah. The character sheets. So. I would have agreed with you 100% on that um, until probably two weeks ago when I started digging into this idea of aspects. Now, yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to quote the book here. So oh, good. get the Faye court system, core system book. They start talking about aspects on page 56. And um, it talks about aspects being personality traits, background or professions, important possessions, relationships. When I started thinking about this, you have your, um, you know, you have your sword and your shield. You have your sword. Your sword has a damage dice right. roll. Right. Um, here with fate, None because it's narrative, mm -hmm. it almost becomes. It, it is really a you really I think have to be a really good GM to make fate a good game. I think I don't. I'm not oh, trying yeah. to make it sound it's, difficult, but but it's you, like 95 percent GM. Yeah, you yeah. have to be creative. Yeah. If you are if you are the monotone, um, Bueller, you know, Bueller. uncreative. It, well, I'm not going to make fun of it at Stein, but if you have that type of tone in your voice, <laughs> but but you have a lot less creativity than Ben Stein, right? Um, I think this game could really, really drag. Um, yes. But this idea of, and then I'm going to flip back over page six and seven, talk about this in the core system guide. And I don't want to make it sound like we haven't looked at it before because we have going, like you said, you've gotten back and you actually were, were, were looking at writing for the game. I just think that when I first took a look at this, I'm like, this is just, when I first read it, I, I really honestly said, this is kind of lame. Um, yeah, I didn't feel like it, it was going to satisfy the RPG itch we had to play. The more I've read it, and now that I have done some 
DM GMing, mm-hmm. I look at this and I'm like, I wouldn't necessarily want to do it in the realm we're playing now on d right. right. I don't necessarily think we'd want to do it in Star Trek, but if we wanted to create, you know, there's different, I, you, you're going to, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. You know, fate has different toolkits yeah. related to worlds and themes, Yeah, but I think about the character sheet and I look at this character sheet and I could actually write myself out in this character sheet. And I yes. think you could write yourself. That's out. a really good point. And you're in this character sheet better than any other character sheet. You have your aspects, you have your stress, you have your stunts, your consequences. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and if you think about it, and this will, this will, this is going to uh, uh, produce humor on Jason's side. If you were to write a character sheet for me as a 20 year old versus oh, a let me get she- my pen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> versus a character sheet as a mid 40 year old. Your, your narrative would have changed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it would have. Um, <laughs> much more benign. And, and, and if Jason were writing it now, it would be much less acerbic. But it's funny how if we went through the exercise, yeah, haha. If, if we went through the exercise now of taking that yeah. sheet and writing ourselves as when we first met 18 year olds fresh into college versus 40 yeah. somethings now, this, this character sheet this design of a character, you could truly, you've created a character in the D and D world, Mm -hmm. which in some ways has some of your own traits, right? But there's also some mystical components and things that obviously don't have any correlation to real life. You could do the same thing with fate, but the, but you look at all the skills and everything like that. You could write yourself out I could write myself out Some and really we could use point. that as like, we could use that in a game, <clears throat> excuse me, in a realm that we create all our own. That's not fantasy, not sci-fi. It could right. be literally just, I mean, it could be we the could adventure design, of like a road trip. We could design the most realistic, the most narratively deep, the most mind-numbingly boring game ever written for RPGs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If someone wants to, to take, the character sheets for you and I and make themselves, even if they have a more dynamic character sheet, if you include us as NPCs, that would be a game killer. To quote Uh, my second favorite Android life. Don't talk to me about life. (laughs) I'm like, I'm going to leave that alone. But um, I just think that this game has the simplicity to it that is very it's sneaky because it's it's i think because yes it's i I think put another way it is mechanically simplistic big time and man i never thought about like that brad but i really do agree it's mechanically simplistic but now if we you already mentioned the toolkits so fate so uh, the evil hat productions right the producers of fate they have produced they've written what is it about I think it's just shy of half a dozen, about half a dozen toolkits. Um, my favorite one of which is the Fate Space Toolkit, right? These are these beautifully bound, beautifully printed toolkits. And I've only played, uh, like for my own vacation, played with, I, I've only read through this, this Space Toolkit. But like we were talking off air and I mean, I'm just gonna, I mean, this is just beautiful. So Okay, I know this isn't real life, but just looking at the table of contents, here in this one toolkit are the, the topic headings for world building, okay? Going in order, spacecraft and space travel, space combat, aliens and alien worlds, the, God, the gods know future things, the high frontiersmen, mass drivers, millennials, there's a joke in there somewhere, mm-hmm. Pox Galactica, right? So... It's all this narrative stuff. So even if we were going to use fate to really build out ourselves as characters, there's so much material that they've produced for it that we could make it as unrealistic or as peppered as we want. I just, you you were saying that I could just imagine us 
writing our true selves out on character sheets within the realm of space. And it would be like a game a, of, sorry, it would be like paranoia, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, no, I was going to say it was going to be like a game of hitchhiker's guide. Oh um, God, that'd be great. <laughs> See here, we're back to my second favorite Android. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, so think about it. You know, you took put two people like us with our, with our standard real life character sheets um, what would be more interesting is my 20 year old character sheet against your 40 something year old character sheet in the context of a space hitchhikers type of how, universe. You know, I don't know how you would roll the dice for just a whole lot of dismissive head shaking, but fate <laughs> dice would probably allow it more than the others. And, and you know what? Head shaking would be his <clears throat> over my decision. That's making. correct. And you know yeah. what? You know, just like just like the automated computerized doors on the heart of gold or sorry, the heart of space. Um, Someday you and I could have real people personalities courtesy of this game. Yes. Yes. I, I just, so interesting. The more I look at this and, and the funny thing is, is this week when we talk, I'm going to G and the G I have other things for the GM corner, but I did focus on this in the GM corner. You know, this would be the thing I had focused on the most. Yeah. I sat here now where I record it's also my work office. Mm-hmm. So I moved my work stuff out of the way and I put the fate book in front of me one night and I stared at this character sheet and then I would go back and reference some of the material, but the game master in me was really chugging in terms of the material that we could use or we could do with this game i think again yeah. it's deceptively yeah. simple so yeah. by the way just as an aside jason doesn't know this yet i, I apologize in advance to anyone who's listening um i didn't plug my mic in jay so i'm i'm using my standard uh oh. mic off of my computer so i didn't even if know the, it. Nor yeah, were if you the sound check. is a little if the sound's a little different for me this week that won't happen again and it was just it was purely coincidental because i'm looking at my mic right there i don't well, know plug, why I didn't plug it in now while i'm talking yeah, I'm going to mute and I'm going to plug it in okay. the chat. That's that's pretty funny. And welcome to, you know, it's funny because just the other day I was thinking about how we break the fourth wall a lot in our podcast. <laughs> so so Brad's, Brad's nodding as he's plugging in his microphone. That's really funny. We do try to keep the audio quality as high as we reasonably can. Just like I'm assuming the answer is no because of sound cancellation through through our recording, but uh, we're we're experiencing a fairly significant thunderstorm right now here, and like I can constantly hear thunder, and I'm downstairs. I can't hear. We couldn't. Yeah. You know, I don't. Oh, know you do I'm... sound better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, folks. Hello. I could I haven't been able to hear the thunderstorm at all? I would. Oh, that's good. I wouldn't yeah. have even known it. No. So never mind. No thunderstorm. We'll just okay. write that out of the script. It's fate. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. Fate. You could throw in a thunderstorm, and you could determine if you get hit by lightning or not. Roll the dice. And that's you know, and I you know, I guess I mean we say that, but maybe that's not accurate. Where with fate, the guidance is don't roll the dice for everything. Mm-hmm. Whereas I like rolling the dice for everything. I think that's just fun. Whether I'm a I'm a player, whether I'm the GM. Well, think about think about the game that we're playing in D anD. d It's almost fate desk a little bit because yeah, we've been i I had to lay the groundwork. We've talked mm-hmm. about this before. There was less dice rolling than there should have been, in my opinion. Well, but you had said, but you always tell me when you you'll say, you know, Jace, this this session's going to be a little more cerebral, cerebral or this session's going to be a very much story and plot. But the but I I noticed when I was I I especially became very cognizant this week of it that I have you all roll the dice much less or less let's say let's just say less less than I probably should using the mechanic we're doing so yeah. and I've talked about this before that I've I've tweaked it when we play next it's going to be a little different but it just became very i became very aware of it because you bring up a great point and that is this i guess any system if you think about it yeah you could overroll um, yes but fate because it's so story driven i think i could get caught in a situation where you just forget i'm i'm i forget and yeah. i'm asking you for behavioral decisions and then i'm generating results in my head based off of those behavioral decisions 
and not allowing you to roll to make the decision. Okay, so let's so say, in effect, I'm bleeding in real life. Real life. Yeah. Let's so let's let's segue into that for a, for a moment because that's really interesting because I think we have covered most of what we want to explore in terms of fate specifically, certainly mechanically. But that's really interesting, Brad, because don't you think as GMs, right? Don't you think as a GM, that's always the risk that, that you know, especially if you're playing with people, so you really know, especially if you're playing with good friends, you just can riff off of one another and you could like like we could probably do it without dice entirely and still keep it D, even though it wouldn't be nearly nearly as fun. Well, and you and I, I mean, we sit here, we we both have, you know, our dice near us on our desk, even when we're working or doing other things. Um you know, I think and and correct me if I'm wrong, when I did the world building for our D D game. I don't think I come across normally as an overly creative person when it comes to that type of material. So oh, I don't know about that. Oh, really? See, I expect, see, I thought that I wrote, you know, I, I, you know, I was in music growing up. Um, I was in theater a little bit, um, got well away from that in the world I'm in, mm -hmm. in, in business. This allowed me this gaming and fate reminded me of this allowed me to stretch those creative you know those i got to stretch those creative muscles that i haven't for a while i'd yeah, i'd use yeah. the left brain right brain mentality which is absolutely incorrect but i'd use that that phrasing just because you know everyone always says the left brain's your analytical the right side's your creative which i know yeah, with yeah your thank background. you for, but we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll uh, i'll allow you it know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I I've been so I've been so analytical that I haven't been creative and that allowed me to create almost too complex of a world. It wasn't for me, but very complex. Mm -hmm. And I have to be cautious when we play because I could dive in much mm -hmm. like with you could do with fate. And it it's almost as if I've kind of created a little bit of a hybrid between the two systems the character sheet in D, &D is a true character sheet but the decision making and all that i think is a little more i on this side i see what i see what you're saying i see what you're saying but but i don't agree i think you're i think you're doing what D, &D has not was not designed by by gygax but but was i think what it's evolved to be that you've developed a very story-driven game that still has a lot of roles. And I really like that. And, and I think I think we can do that, you know, with my with my Star Wars jamming in the past year, because it's been for my for my nephews, right? Who are who are who are teens. Uh, I have I've been cognizant of the flip side that I I have made sure I am regularly asking them to roll. Honestly, 85% of the time it's just role perception. You do that a lot in Star Wars, but yep. but still it just engages them because when I've tried to go deep with story, you know, that's that's not where they are. Just like when we were in our 20s, we weren't as as interested in the story although we wanted it as we were in the action and the combat. And now it's much more 50-50. So I I I mean I love the narrative you're building. But it's fun. You, you hit on something and you, it, it was very brief when you mentioned it. And that is, you know, you are a player in my game. You are a GM in the Star Wars game. Yeah. We're going to flip. We're going to flip it because um, probably even tonight we're going to start the preparations after we record for a Star Wars yeah, we'll say more about Star that Wars in the GM game. corner. Yeah. That's where I was going to okay. go. Okay, but yeah. in effect, what we're going to do is, is I'm the player and you're right. the GM. So I haven't been really a player yet. We did we did a mini story um, or a story, but yeah. that's really it. I you're haven't right. I haven't played a game in a while. So um, it'll be interesting. I will be very curious, not as a GM, but as your friend to know what your experience is like as a player. I mean, I'm, I'm very much like you, I think, in the, and vice versa in the regard that when I enter a situation, 
I don't know what the right way to put this is. I don't have any interest in being in charge. I simply prefer being in control. Right. Yeah, not yeah, up yeah. right, right. Not up front, not, but I, I, I'm, I'm much more comfortable when I can say to myself, they're in my world now. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, I'm not sure what this is about, but with role playing, this is one of the only, maybe the only area of my life where I emphatically prefer to be the player because mm-hmm. I want to jump into the story as that character. And so I'm curious, I'm curious what your experience will be as a player over multiple sessions, not just like one off. I could see you doing that with the player piece just because, and I, and I, there's a creative component to it. You yeah. are a, you know, for someone who works in the behavioral field and the leadership field, you have a people misconstrue creativity as if you're not creative unless you're in the arts or unless you're in music. Or yeah, that's like true. That. Mm-hmm. Creativity is everywhere in terms of you are creative in terms of the research you're doing. Go mm-hmm. back, folks. If you, ha- I, I'm going to plug it again. If you haven't gone back, listen to the leadership on Trek episode and and go read the Trek article. That's creative. There's there's obviously non creative components to it, but but you were creative enough to find the parallels. Um, I'm not trying to. T- I'm just what I, my point here is is that there's creativity. You are a creative person. I've always felt that in terms of the, what you choose to research, you write a lot of research, but you also have written, uh, fictional material, um, you know, and this allows you, I think to stretch and it'll be interesting for me because I haven't experienced this really yet is to be in control of myself in the yeah. game, yeah, but right. not be in control of the story and not have any responsibilities. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for those things. I'm not sure. Actually, I'm, I'm sure not trying to, I'm not trying. No, to, you're not. We know, you know each other way too. I just, that. I just think that, you know, like we've talked, we talk about music a lot because yeah. you're learning to play an instrument. Yeah. I've, I played instruments in the past. I've started to pick up and, you know, I used to play brass when I was younger and I thought I was going to go to college to be a professional musician. Yeah. It didn't turn out, but I've come back and played guitar you're doing keyboard. We have a lot of parallels because I grew up playing piano and organ. Yeah. So there's creativity in that, but it stretches outside of our business realm. And as I hate to say this, in many ways, um, someone told me this once, and then I'm re- we're really off topic. Um, yeah, well, it's on men, creativity, so we're good. Yeah, when, when men meet each other, one of the first things they always ask each other is, what do you do for a living? I, I purposely don't do that. Yes. I go out of my way not to. Because, and, and it's because you define yourself by what you do every well, day. But it's also, it's like asking, and, hey, what do you drive? I'm sorry, that's an ego thing. Yeah. It, oh, that's exactly what it is. But but if you're defined by that, then in many ways, people think you're not creative. And besides, and, you just start yelling, I drive a Dodge Stratus, I drive a Dodge Stratus, and everyone gets uncomfortable. Yeah. Sorry, I keep going. Right. <laughs> or we both drive Mazdas now, but that yes. goes to another story zoom, zoom. another day. Yeah. Yep. So... Um, as we kind of wrap this up here, I think <laughs> I think it is getting back to fate for a minute. What were we talking um, about? Yeah, what were we talking about again? Um, I just really think that you know every time we talk about a different game, every week I want to play that game. Like last week, I, I was, know I, I was all over Pathfinder, which I still am. Don't get me wrong, but now and, I look I'm at sorry fate and, again. And, and when Brad says he's still all over Pathfinder. I get two to three messages a day with photos of books on his shelf for desk asking me when I'm buying them. Yes. Well, and I even, not an exaggeration. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in the GM corner. Okay. 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 um, Point being is, is that (laughs) I think there's real validity in looking at fate as a very realistic system. When we talk about RPGs in life and faith, and all that yeah you could argue that fate can really drive a fantastic narrative story in any direction you want whether it's down a sci you know a sci fantasy path a sci-fi path a horror path there's a horror toolkit you Um, you could play this on a road trip while you're in the car with someone designated as the roller yeah yeah i mean there's there's fate rollers on your phone you can you can use an app and roll it 
Oh, I'm sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, right. Okay. Well, we know now when we do our next uh, bike packing trip or wherever it is that we're when we're all in the car, you know what we're going to do. Yep. So you're going to play fate and I'm going to sleep. There which is. is traditionally what happens when I get in the car, so, which is not when I'm driving, just yeah. when I'm a passenger. It's, it's so. that, that joke, you know, uh, my grandfather recently died peacefully, but, but not as passengers. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, on that note, <laughs> on that note, the, welcome to the GM corner, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go first this time. So yeah, I'm, please jokes aside about Jace, um, about Pathfinder. I still anticipate us doing it someday, someday, but there was, I, I picked up, um, a three adventure, um, path, the abomination bolts. Oh, and, and that's what you've been, and I, I purpose you've been sending me those, right? Or, or yeah, pictures so of I, them. I have them because they were cheap, yep. and I picked them up used, and I put them. Always on the, shelf. the sign of a good story. Yep. Yeah. So I, I read about the story. They're good. Okay. And I'm going to put that away, and when the day comes that we're going to play Pathfinder, we're not going to have to do a ton of world building or anything. We'll play through the adventure path. I would see how it goes. You have my word that we're going to eventually play Pathfinder. And actually, I would like to play an AP because I do think it's like we talked about last week. It is really unique to Pathfinder. And and why not? Yeah. I think the other thing is, is, and it's funny because um, you sent me a picture today that I thought I had sent you. And that is, and then there's one more I want to do after this. Yeah, no, I told you I got it. I ordered it, yeah. So it's 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 the book. I saw it online. Yeah, why don't you tell? It's called the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters. Um, it's by I love it. Yeah, it's by Jeff Ashworth. Uh huh. And he's got another one I saw coming out in this fall. He's got. I'm sorry. He's got an NPC book coming out this fall. Looks this really good. This book. I'll let you talk about the book. But no, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. No, no, no. I'll let you do that. But because there's one thing that came up that I didn't forgot to tell you about before we got on here. There is a Kickstarter out there and I'm going to hear you click on your keyboard in a second called the never ending dungeon. I think you sent me a link on this. No, I didn't hear about this oh. until tonight. Oh, I have never tell? seen it. And so it is it, the title of it is AI powered software for adventures, creation for tabletop RPGs, less prep, more play, a time saver for G, for DMs and players. And so what it is, it's a tool to help with procedural adventures where it's terrain g- generation. You uh-huh. can fill it with monsters. It'll uh-huh. assist you with running sessions. It sounds a lot like the tabletop gaming systems like Roll20 and everything like that. But, but generative. Creative, yeah. And, and the funny thing at the bottom was what hooked me. Is and if you lack gaming partners, play solo adventure. So, um, if Jason refuses to play Pathfinder Second Edition with me until you know, next just year, go actually, to your our room joke, and we play with yourself. Yes, yes, pretty much. J- yeah. Jokes aside, we've already said we won't touch that till probably second quarter next year. Yeah, but the, interesting. It looks fascinating in terms of of building and being able to use this playing online and sharing screen. So, oh, interesting. So the the Kickstarter was for the um, the lowest end one was like thirty bucks. Okay. So I'll get a mm-hmm. lifetime license to it, um, all the stretch goals, everything, and that's going to be an experiment of mine. Um, I haven't looked yet. I, I again, this was a bit joke. Don't don't you dare. This was a bit of an impulse purchase. Stop. Don't talk. Shocking, um, shocking. Yeah, I knew you. Um, you know, and they're actually looking at different themes. It's fantasy right now, but they're looking at cyber, sci fi, mm-hmm. steampunk. Mm-hmm. Not our thing, but mm. I just I could see this as a tool where it would take less work for me than other mm. tools out there to generate areas of my larger adventure. And it's all AI and presumably some machine learning to learn your styles. Yeah, that's what I'm betting. I, so the I, singularity is near. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. So that's, I'll let you talk about the interesting the, the guide, but this, and I forgot to mention it before we talked, um, it was worth, so the goal um, was $11,000. 
Okay, well, what what did they get? Three hundred and fifty three thousand. And how long has it been open? Uh, I can't tell, but there's thirty five oh. hours to go. So Jeez. It's close. Yeah. On the twenty eighth, and I think, in all honesty, I think it was an advertisement in one of the gaming groups on Facebook. So they're they're pulling a Matt Colville on Kickstarter. Yeah. 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 Wow. Good for them. I, yeah. uh, I, I'll, I'll look for updates from you. That sounds, for me, I have no yeah. idea. For me, yeah. I think as a, as a fantasy dungeon master for us, yeah, I could find this very fascinating as your character and the NPCs that play, cause we played do right. Um, right. If I can generate material and we could actually generate a look and feel for our character. You know, oh, it does interested. all of that. It, there's there's some talk about that, but oh, even wow. if you're not, you can use, you know, that's one thing we haven't done, and I'm going to turn it over, is that one day we might want to look at, I know we have some artist friends, to try to actually draw out what our player characters look like. So, because I would, I would be quite interested in what your player character looks like, because you made it a point of him speaking like uh, Alan Rickman. Yeah, he pretty so, much looks like a like an elvish Alan Rickman. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, yeah. for that alone, I, I think it would be worth <laughs> seeing a drawing of your character. Okay. You go ahead. No, that's okay. So do me a favor. Read when you're done drinking there. No, no, sorry. Yeah. yeah um, read, read the title and the author again for us. I've, I've so, left mine upstairs. Oh yeah. So it's the game master's book of random encounters by Jeff Ashworth. Thank you. It says here at the bottom, 500 plus customizable maps, tables, and story hooks to create fifth edition RPG adventures on demand. And when you and I were talking, we when we when I looked at this and when you looked at it, it is in effect um, a cyclopedia yeah. of of anything and everything you might want to do and 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 material that would make it makes it so much easier to build it. I I I agree. You know, you, you send me, I mean, we send each other stuff on this all the time with the excuse being the podcast mm -hmm. and, and you send me lots of recommendations for links or, or books or whatever. And, and normally I, you know, I'll often respond, wow, that looks really cool, but you know, you know, I'm not going to get them unless they really sing to me. And this one, um, man, uh, this one I, I I looked and through the Fey Wild Magic that is Amazon. I ordered it yesterday and it arrived this morning. Uh, ironically, while I was downstairs writing, uh, and and I, didn't, I I I opened it right before I went to the university, uh, and I flipped through and I thought right away. Oh, I'm and, and you know I'm really glad I ordered it. Here's the kicker. I ordered it, and then a couple hours later, I was like, wait, I'm being impulsive. And I tried to cancel the order. True story. <laughs> and they're like, are you sure you want to cancel it? It's already in processing. And it's like, you know what? Take the karma for what it is. I'll keep it. I can always return it. It's easy. It arrives this morning. And you're, you're not kidding, Brad. And you're not, you're not overstating. Uh, I flipped through all of it. I, I will finish reading the forward. Uh, I'm sorry, the introduction this evening after we have our session zero. Uh, for Star Wars, but it's so interesting. I'm I so thank you for the recommendation. I'm really glad I have it. That one's going on the shelf. Um, okay, it'll actually be one volume over from Candle Keep, but it's the same kind of thing for me. Of there is so oh sorry. So we should explain. It's they have a, a like a dozen. He has a dozen one shots. And then the rest, and actually quite a, quite a bit of material. And then the rest of this book of this of this tome really is, and it's beautifully printed, really laid out, really accessible for a GM to literally grab pieces in situ in the game. Like even if you forgot to prep, boom, you've got this ma manual for this. Uh, not manual is the wrong word, and it's almost entirely environments, every kind you can imagine with maps and descriptors and uh, indicators for NPCs, you still have to have the core trifecta of books from D&D, &D, right? Mm -hmm. This is all written for 5e, but it's remarkable. And then like I messaged you earlier this evening, the random generator tables in yeah. the end, um, I'm, I'm curious to use those. I, I'm looking at the page and he's, he writes, he's like, take a D100, 
and roll it six or D is 60, 100. And I'm like, but there are only 15 options, 15 rows. And then I kept turning pages and it's, oh my God, there are 100 rows of six different factors. And, and it's just, it's ridiculously creative. So I, yeah, I agree with you, my friend. I think e even if I never use it, if like, maybe I'll never GM D and D it will, it will be worth the creative juices just oh, yeah. to flip through this thing. So definitely recommend it. And, and as always, we'll put a link in the show notes yeah. so that listeners can take a look if they're interested. This is, this is a person I would, I wouldn't mind having on our show at some point. That would be awesome. Um, you know, so yeah, plug agreed. to hopefully Jeff, if you're out there and somehow you, yeah, if you're one of our three book, listeners. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you find a link to your book on, our podcast page, uh, reach out. We'd love to have you on. Yes, yeah, seriously, because um, he, he's got an NPC guide like this coming out in a month or two. And that one looked even better. And I was going to order that one. It's like, oh, never mind. I can't. I'll have to do it later. Yeah, I'll, yeah. well, I will too. I will. When, yeah. you, when, you, when you do it, and for the record, I, I'm looking over there. I still think you have candle keep and I don't. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what that's good. about. I still, I still want to play in Candlekeep. It's such a cool. I mean, it just resonates strongly with me. It's such a cool, super nerdy setting. Yeah, it just looks cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's an interesting one. I haven't picked that book up yet. I'm just surprised. If you don't, I'm gonna send it to you. Yeah. So yeah. well, just. Don't worry about it. It's I'm, on Amazon. He's, it's I'm pretty sure, guys, that he's literally on Amazon right now. As I can hear the clicking, as as he re we're recording, I think he is. Yeah. Yes. Thumbs up. Did you've you seen it here live? Did you just you've... order it while yes, recording? I did. Yes. Through the magic of the internet, people. Through the yes. magic of the and internet. If, and if you think about it, I remember us talking in the city where we live. Um, in the car, you're the one that introduced me to this idea of Amazon because we used really? to always go to Barnes and Noble oh, or yeah. to a local bookstore yep. where I we would yep. sit and have tea and talk whatever, pretty much talk like you're hearing here. Yep. Um, and you're the one that said, oh, this, this site, Amazon, you can you could find any book you want out there. And if it isn't out there, you could put a request in. And they'll keep an eye out for you for it. I remember you saying that. Yeah, because Do you know how long ago that must have been? Oh, that was oh Lord. I don't know if you had moved up. No way, moved no up way. The city. No. You know? So No way. And look at and look at where we are now. And now <laughs> now Bezos owns half of the planet. So, yeah, you know, and flew into flew into air quote space. I know. Yeah, I was gonna say about, you know, air quotes flew into space. Right. Yeah. So right. he's Some a air quote astronaut, and originally right. it was just to find a book. So look, that's good business sense. Yeah. All right. Since we've yet again wandered fully away from whatever the heck we were talking about when we started this, this episode, as always, we thank you for listening, for tuning in. Uh, please make sure to follow us on Apple podcasts or wherever you pod your casts. Please make sure to check us out on Facebook the Dyson Mind page, what my daughters fondly refer to as old people technology. Uh, Brad has been working on Instagram, which I understand is only recently old people technology. Soon, Brad will be having an all dance TikTok just for just for a Dyson Mind. Yeah, that, yeah we're we want we want to keep our three listeners, so there will not be any Brad dancing TikTok. No, I so, think we call did that you dancing. Mention, did you mention YouTube? No, thank you. So we are definitely on YouTube. In fact, if you Google Dyson Mind, uh, probably because Google owns YouTube, but still, if you Google Dyson Mind, uh, the first hits almost invariably will be some of our YouTube videos, which are are not videos. They're, they're just the audio ports with uh, with a nice audiogram on them. Uh, we make it a point to release every new episode concurrent at the exact same time. Uh, with the release to all of our podcast outlets. So as always, Jason, before oh, yeah. you, before you uh -oh. go, uh -oh. I'm going to challenge He's smiling. you for, the, uh -oh. for those that, for those that have actually stuck around this long in the podcast, Yeah, you thought it was over, but I'm going to challenge Jason. We have recorded a while back, Jason reading one of his stories. When we were I was actually wondering if this would ever come up. Yes. 
So I'm challenging you to this week, because we were just talking about creativity and writing, to release that episode. All right, thank you. Okay, done. We will release, very good, we will release a bonus episode uh, midweek, one of the least bad short stories that I wrote a few years ago, trying to get my creative juices flowing right? To, to just be a better writer in general. We'll release that. Brad and I did that together. The production quality is pretty good. Uh, we had some fun with it. If we're happy with it and you're happy with it, we'll, um, we'll release another one or two of those this fall and winter. And also, since Brad mentioned this as a bonus episode, a sneak peek several weeks from now, we have a guest interview coming out uh, we're recording it as of this recording right now. Uh, I'm doing the interview in two weeks. So this will probably drop in three to four weeks. It's a, an interview with a, a colleague of mine who has just a really, talk about creativity, Brad, just a really exceptionally diverse creative and technical background who also has been posting on our Facebook page about his D and D games, which just sound wild. So we're going to talk D and D we're going to talk art. We're going to talk engineering. We're going to talk professionalism. We're going to talk his idea, uh, what D and D and role-playing gave him during the pandemic. So stay tuned. That'll be out in three to four weeks. As always, if Brad lets me get through this now, thank you. Be well. Stay well. We will see you next week.